This unit of study is on the image acquisition process in fluoroscopy. We're going to be learning about specific terminology related to this and the technical factors. So fluoroscopic technique is um, basically you have to go back to why image intensifiers were developed. We needed to increase the displayed brightness so that we could image the um, details on the moving image. This increase in brightness allowed the photopic vision to be activated, which is the vision where, um, using the cones, where visual acuity and contrast perception are the best. The image brightness is dependent on the part of anatomy that is being imaged. And this is, you know, fluctuates between the patient habitus or the structure. Um, of the patient that you really have no control over, right? What you do have control over are the technical factors used to acquire the best dynamic image. So the technical factors in fluoroscopy are similar to those in static x-ray imaging. You really want to use a higher KVP and a lower MA, but sometimes this really isn't achievable because of the factors we mentioned before body habitus of the patient or the type of exam you're imaging. So this is where the expertise of the radiologist and the technologist are used to work together so you can get the best image. Surgeons do have some fluoroscopic training, which is required, but actually they're more fixated on seeing what they need to visualize so that they can have um, a good surgical outcome or they can place that line in the right place. You may have experienced situations in surgery or ICU where the physician isn't able to see the image the way they want. And this is not really a fun scenario as they might yell at you to fix it. So this unit is about how to do that. So brightness gain, if you remember, is the ability of the image intensifier to convert the X-ray photon energy into light photon energy or the image luminescence on the monitor. This is measured by multiplying the flux gain by the minification gain. So brightness gain was the terminology used when there was a specific fluoroscopic screen called a Patterson B2. It kind of was the known standard and the formula was actually written that it was the intensity of the output phosphor divided by the intensity of a Patterson B2 fluoroscopy screen. You have to remember though, the screen was actually very unstable, so the number itself was unstable. The conversion factor is the correct terminology to use, and you might see it referenced on various textbooks or websites that you look at. So brightness gain is actually the more common terminology and that's the one that you'll hear mostly on in the clinical sites. But what they're really talking about is the conversion factor of the X-ray photons at the input screen to the light photons at the output screen. So remember from the prior slide, it references factors of flux and minification. So what is flux? It is the ratio of the number of output light photons over the number of input x-ray photons. Or saying it in an easier way, using a few x-ray photons to produce many more light photons. And this is the image intensifier's conversion efficiency. And minification is just that. When you think about the design of the image intensifier, the output screen diameter is much smaller than the input screen. So the image actually is made smaller, but it has the same number of electrons produced at the input screen. They're now compressed onto the smaller surface area of the output screen, which makes the image brighter. An example that is stated in Carlton Adler on page 539, if the output phosphor produces 50 light photons for every one electron that strikes it, the flux gain would be 50. It should be recognized that 
flux gain does not take into account the conversion efficiency of the input screen. It's only the electron to light conversions at the output screen. Flux gain causes the same intensification issues that we studied when we talked about the characteristics of using screens in analog imaging. Things like phosphor thickness or type, the concentration of the phosphors, all these um, characteristics cause penumbral issues due to the um, light phosphor emission. So minification is interesting. There's actually no word in the dictionary for this. Um, there's no definition. But basically what it is is it causes the image to be brighter because there's the same number of electrons that produce the image. So most image intensifiers have diameters of 6, 9, or 12 inches, and the output screens are about 1 inch. Well, actually, these diameters are usually stated in centimeters. So just know that a 6-inch screen is the same as a 15-centimeter diameter screen, or the 12-inch screen is really 30 centimeters, and output screens are 2.5 centimeters. The output phosphor is um, measured in candela per meter squared. This is the measurement of luminous intensity. So the higher the conversion factor, the more efficient the image intensifier tube is. So conversion factor is the recommended unit of measure uh, by the International Commission on Radiation Units and Measurements. So this is how you quantify image intensifier brightness gain. So typical values are about 80 to 250 candela per meter squared for each millirankin per second, or we can think of it as 8 to 25,000 times. Brightness from phosphors can lose luminescence due to their age, which occurs about 10% a year. And when a phosphor um, ages, then more technical factors are needed. So there's different things that happen that are commonly used in the image intensity process. We have something that's called automatic brightness control. That is the most common um, terminology. ADC is how it's abbreviated. ADC is the automatic dose control and ABS is the automatic brightness stabilization. So basically what this means is that the technique adjusts to the subject density and the contrast automatically by increasing or decreasing technical factors. So these systems actually monitor the current flow as it moves in the cathode to the anode in the image intensification tube. Some of these systems measure the monitor signal intensity at the output tube, output phosphor of the tube. When the current or the intensity falls below the established levels, then maybe the KVP or the MA or the pulse time adjusts. And we'll talk about pulse time later. But when the KV is increased, the MA decreases. If the KVP is lowered because you want a more acceptable contrast, um, then the MA will double. And this process adjusts back and forth um, in these automatic brightness gain systems. The um, ABCs typically have a very slow response, um, but the video mu uh, viewing system has something called the automatic gain control, and those actually respond much quicker without a change in technical factors. So the image quality in philosophy is very similar to um, what we see in static imaging, but sometimes there's some things that are more sensi sensitive because of the dynamic nature of the image. 
Sometimes the image intensifier is, itself is moving, or sometimes it's the anatomy that moves, such as in a GI study. The factors um, of quantum model is really the most prevalent and the thing that is what we're working to overcome. And quantum model is just defined as um, insufficient number of photons. So the first image quality um, of contrast is controlled by the amplitude of the signal. So the origin is the potential difference between the cathode and the anode inside the image intensification tubes. There are three factors that can affect the image due to the amplitude of the signal. So scatter we know is one, and scatter causes a gray or a low contrast image, which makes it more difficult to see density dif differences. There's also a loss of contrast resolution from the penumbral light that's scattered at the input and the output phosphor screens. And there's also light scatter within the image intensific intensification tube itself, and this is kind of the inherent efficiency of the light conversion um, that happens at the phosphor or the electron conversion at the photocathode. To be able to see really small details on the dynamic image, the geometry becomes very important. And same reasons, basically, as static imaging. But there are differences in fluoroscopy, one of them being minification gain. Remember that um, it is dependent on the video monitor display image um, spatial resolution. But due to processes such as magnification, motion, the light phosphor penumbra, the ability at the end to see detail, it can be degraded at the display monitor itself. Size distortion in fluoroscopy is very similar to static imaging. Um, the image can be magnified on the displayed image. And this actually occurs at the minified output screen and is easier to see when the image is actually displayed on the video monitor. Shape distortion can happen in fluoroscopy mainly from the concave shape of the input screen. There's shape distortion kind of seen on the corners of an image due to this shape, the concave shape, and it causes edge distortion on the output screen. And the reason is because most of the electrons are pushed together by the electrostatic focusing lenses. But there are some electrons that are not part of these, um, that are funneled to the output phosphor. These electrons, they're located more on the edges. They tend to flare out because they're being repelled by that same charge um, of the electrons produced by the photocathode and um, pushed together by the electrostatic lenses. That same force kind of spreads some other ones on the edges further out. So image one is an image of vignetting or sometimes called the pincushion effect. Um, besides the distortion that's there, there's usually more brightness at the center of the image and it's more dim at the edges. So image two is an example of how the image is acquired or captured at the input phosphor. But because of the design of the image intensifier, the output image is distorted. And image three shows the difference between the concave image intensifier and then the flat panel image intensifier that's found in more modern digital fluoroscopy systems. So quantum model is probably the thing that we pay attention to the most at this point in fluoroscopy. And it's for the same reasons. It's low technique. That's what we talk about in static radiography. In static imaging, we know that MA and time are the technical factors needed to overcome quantum model. But in fluoroscopy, it's different because we really only choose the MA. 
but the time is actually dependent on how quickly our eye can accumulate the light photons from the displayed image. It takes the eye about um, 0.2 seconds for this to occur in fluoroscopy. So with the lower MAs, the time becomes increased to avoid model. Quantum model um, can also come from the video systems that are found in fluoroscopy because they operate with the minimum number of photons possible, which is what activates the fluoroscopic screen. And other factors that change the brightness of the image um, in addition to the radiation output, which is the ability of our eye to adjust to the brightness, are the subject beam attenuation factors, the conversion efficiency of the input screen itself, the flux gain, the brightness gain, and then the viewing system monitor itself. And actually, it accounts for the distance that between the um, display screen and the person who's viewing the monitor. These factors contribute to the model at the end, but the main solution is to increase the MA. And when I say that these contribute to the model above there, it's the perception of the eye seeing the image that might make it appear as grainy. All of those things are factors. So we have something called magnification mode in fluoroscopy. Um, and it's very common, and it's actually identified, you can tell if you can do this, when there's multiple diameters available for use inside one image intensifier. So basically, the size is chosen um, by increasing the voltage to the electrostatic focusing lens. When this voltage is increased, the electron stream is tightened, or it's made smaller. And these are the only electrons that interact with the output phosphor screen. This tightening changes the location of the focal spot. It actually moves it away from the output screen, which has the same effect of increasing the OID. And when we're not actually changing the actual field size, but um, we're changing the intensification so that movement of the focal spot is what changes. But, so it actually brings the diameter of the screen smaller. It's kind of like automatic collimation, so that only the x-ray beams um, that are narrowed down are the ones used to obtain the image. The magnification mode, of course, gives us better spatial resolution and better contrast um, resolution, but this is all at the ex expense of higher dose to the patient. Magnification modes are capable of 1.5 to 4 times the uh, image size. The formula you'll see um, on the screen. So let's calculate a magnification. When we say how magnified is an image of a 25-17-12cm image intensifier in the 17-centimeter mode compared to the 25-centimeter mode? You basically just divide the two numbers. And the image magnified 1.5 times in the 17-centimeter mode. Let's do some quick review. 